Steve Croman's arrest and conviction on charges of mortgage fraud and his subsequent record-breaking tenant harassment settlement have sent shockwaves through the landlord community. So, Will, this was a big case, right? This is something that the entire industry was following because they were a lot of landlords and players in the city own you know, a massive amount of rent-regulated housing. This was an enormous case. Uh -huh. This wasn't just a, you know, some landlord owns a few buildings here and there. Steve Croman owned at least 140 buildings mm -hmm. or, um, across New York City. Mm -hmm. He's a big time landlord. Um, you know, he's, he was sentenced to a year in jail. It looks like he's going to serve about eight months about, uh, of that sentence. And so then uh, in this month, we basically saw a major settlement, an $8 million settlement that Steve Croman, on top of paying $5 million in his criminal case and serving time, right. he's going to have to pay $8 million to tenants, which is, which is quite significant, right? Right. And, and just to sort of explain why there are these two separate cases here, it, it's been very difficult to prove the intent of a landlord to do tenant harassment mm -hmm. in criminal courts up to this point. It's something that Attorney General Eric Schneiderman has proposed legislation to, to change the felony statutes for. So actually what Kerman went to prison for was, I think as you mentioned, mortgage and tax fraud. Mm -hmm. He was sort of uh, fudging the numbers on his rent rolls to make it look like the buildings were you know, bringing more money than mm -hmm. the, perhaps they were. So um, mess with tenants, you get a fine. Mess with the banks, it can get more serious, right? That's what a lot of critics are saying. So what's next? So this is a case that, as we talked about, was being closely watched. And there has been a sense in the in the landlord community and in the tenant community that things are changing. So tenants are right. finally someone's taking notice and trying to you know enact legislation that actually brings about a change in the way that these landlords operate. Uh, is there is there a sense from the landlord community that things have sort of dropped the other way too far? There is more than a sense. It's uh -huh. a you know it's a fear and a, an anger on behalf of you know very large property owners and. In New York City and, and smaller ones as well, they feel like they're increasingly becoming targets. Mm -hmm. They think that they're going to have to, you know, uh, have a lot of new regulations to deal with because of some bad apples. They think that, you know, an example like Croman or some of the others are, are ruining business for the rest of them. So they think some of the proposals, you know, uh, make landlords uh, guilty until proven innocent, mm -hmm. that they'll be having to defend every action they take in a building, uh, you know, every day for, you know, starting now and mm -hmm. to the future. One of the big things that came up recently, so the worst landlords list has been around mm -hmm. uh, public advocate at the time, de Blasio started it, and now Tish James has continued it, mm -hmm. which has been always a, a point of controversy. It says, you know, it unfairly penalizes people who own these buildings, but may not have necessarily owned them for a long time. Uh, this year, they added an extra twist by looking at lenders as well. That created some sort of backlash too, right? Right, they've created this new uh, predatory equity Mm -hmm. uh, watch list. I think that passed the city council um, unanimously or, mm -hmm. or close to unanimously uh, in November. So that that puts the spotlight on lenders. You know those who are you know enabling um, you know alleged uh, tenant harassers, landlords that are you know have dubious practices in their businesses. Mm -hmm. They're the ones that are you know greasing the wheels that are you know allowing for speculative acquisitions mm -hmm. to take place, speculative buyout plans, and, and so forth. So in the next few months, do you think that some of these proposals will actually become law? So Schneiderman's proposal, for example, which would uh, expand the criminal statute for mm -hmm. for tenant harassment, that that faces a Republican majority state senate. Um, but, you know, if there's an election next year, the demographic up in Albany could change a bit. And, you know, there might be, with a full Democratic majority, there, there might be an opening for, for that bill to be passed. It mm -hmm. really depends. Steve Croman did not go to prison for making hundreds of tenants' lives miserable. He, made, he went to prison for, for essentially playing a game with the banks. So what is the, the feeling of the tenant movement right now with his case? Do they think that justice was served, even if it's for the wrong reasons? It's, it seems that a lot of them do feel like justice is served. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, I'm sure there are tenants that feel like he should be put away for more time, he should pay more money. But, you know, like we mentioned, these, these kind of settlements or, you know, jail time, are, especially at this level, are incredibly rare and have mm -hmm. been in, in New York real estate for, for quite a while. There aren't that many examples to point to. And do you think it's going to send a warning signal to some of these landlords to maybe play the game a little straighter? I mean, that's certainly the intent on mm -hmm. behalf of the attorney general and, and other elected officials. But, you know, it, it depends on what they do next. We mm -hmm. could go another decade without, you know, many indictments or really any pressure uh, politically on this issue. And then, you know, 20 years later, it comes back again. Mm -hmm.